now on 18 Eyewitness News. Farmington's National Guard unit prepares for deployment to Afghanistan. A southeast Missouri man is facing a second child endangerment charge. Plus, a tasty benefit is planned for the Boys and Girls Club of Poplar Bluff. All of these stories and when will summertime temperatures return? Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Dawkins, and here are the top stories that we're working on for you this hour. Farmington's National Guard 1138 Engineer Company is preparing for deployment to Afghanistan next month as part of the 35th Engineering Battalion. To give the military families a memorable day together, the National Guard Family Readiness Group hosted a special event Sunday at the Armory in Farmington. Also taking part were the veterans of foreign wars, the American Legion, the USO, and other local veterans organizations, along with the East Central Missouri Shrine Club. The 1138 Engineer Company increased combat effectiveness by providing support to the Engineer Battalion in the Brigade. Well, now let's check in with Dustin Kopp. He's here with a look at our first forecast on 18 Eyewitness News. Dustin? Good evening, Fred. Good evening to everybody. Temperatures right now are on the mild side. 69 right now in Festus and St. Genevieve, as well as in Fredertown. 71 right now in Cape Girardeau and Piedmont, and 73 in Poplar Bluff. Here at the station and through southeast Missouri, temperatures are going to continue to be on the mild side this evening. Mostly sunny at 7 p.m., 67 degrees. 60 degrees by 9 p.m., clear skies. Clear skies continue at 54 degrees by midnight. At the bus stop in the morning, we'll continue to see cooler temperatures Throughout southeast Missouri, temperature around 48 degrees with mostly sunny skies and a light to variable wind around north around 2 miles per hour. I'll give you more details on your weekend weather forecast and your forecast for tomorrow. All that coming up later in weather. A 20-year-old southeast Missouri man is facing his second charge of endangering the welfare of a child. Jeremy McClanahan is facing a preliminary hearing May the 29th in Cape County after he was arrested last week in Jackson. A baby in his care was found to have a broken collarbone. Doctors said the injury was caused by blunt force trauma or squeezing. The baby's mother told police that McClanahan told her not to tell anyone from the children's division that he had been in the home because he was afraid he would get in trouble. She also told police she was not initially forthcoming because McClanahan had been violent toward her in the past. He's in the Cape County Detention Center in lieu of a $25,000 cash bond. Now, McClanahan is awaiting trial in Madison County on felony charges of domestic assault child abuse, and endangering the welfare of a child. In that case, McClanahan is accused of severely beating an infant, causing a broken jaw and other injuries. After his arrest, Madison County Prosecutor Andrew Terry filed a motion to revoke McClanahan's bond. This is Arson Awareness Week, and this year's focus is preventing children from setting fires. Farmington Fire Chief Todd Meesey says parents have to keep fire-starting materials away from kids. Most of the time it's not with any criminal intent. It's just uh, the fascination of fire uh, and the availability of uh, smoking materials being left around. The National Fire Protection Association estimates more than 56,000 fires are started by children each year. It's also noted that fires set in homes are more likely to be caused by younger children where older children tend to set fires outdoors. Chief Meesey says fire safety in the home starts with a plan. Taking the time as a family to know how to escape your home, practice that, uh, have a meeting place established outside. Um, it not only it, it makes sure that your family's safe, but it helps us when we arrive on the scene that we know uh, that your family is accounted for. We have a lot of instances where we will arrive at a fire and there'll be an unaccounted member. They're actually out of the house, but we're having to send people in uh, sometimes to very dangerous conditions. Chief Meesey says folks should also be sure to check their smoke detectors frequently to be sure that they're working properly.
Poplar Bluff Regional Medical Center celebrated the topping out of its new seven-story hospital late this morning. In construction, topping out is where the last beam is placed at the top of the building. For the past two weeks, the white ceremonial beam was kept in the medical center's cafeteria so all the employees could sign it. The new $173 million facility is expected to be completed sometime next year. And when we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, music will be ringing through the Arcadia Valley next week. We'll have details coming up on 18 Eyewitness News. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins, Dawn Arnold, Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp, and Jeremy Martin with sports. 18 Eyewitness News continues. The annual Spring Mountain Music Festival returns to the Arcadia Valley next weekend. Event organizer Bobby Powell says the three-day festival features gospel music from the Berry Brothers, cowboy music from Stormy Bennett, and terrific bluegrass sounds from the Baker family. It's a four-piece band. It's three kids and mom. And the boy on the fiddle, he's 12. He's the, Ozar he's the um, Arkansas state junior champion and he's second in missouri in the junior division so he's a he's a fine fiddler the music gets started friday night with friends picking at the gazebo on the iron county courthouse lawn the festival also features craft booths artisan demonstrations and the vintage tractor parade as well as the homemade chicken and dumplings dinner on sunday the annual Taste of the Town is set for Thursday evening from 6 until 11 at the Black River Coliseum in Poplar Bluff. This is the 10th year for the fundraiser for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Poplar Bluff. Executive Director Chris Russian says one ticket is your passport to sample virtually every restaurant in the city. It's all the food you can eat in there. There will be uh, beverages provided by uh, Budweiser. Uh, also, a number of different wineries will be there as well. Uh, Pepsi is also a big sponsor of ours, uh, that they will have a booth themselves. So there's a little bit of everything for anybody to enjoy that night. Tickets are $35 in advance or $40 at the door. They can be purchased by going to bgcpb.org or call 776-1690. Chris says 400 to 500 people took a taste of the town last year. An escapee from a Lawrence County, Arkansas work detail is on his way back to jail after being found in Poplar Bluff. 39-year-old James Lundry left the work detail around noon on Friday. While on the run, Lundry reportedly stole a vehicle, committed an armed robbery at a funeral home, and burglarized an area home where he stole a knife, a 40 caliber handgun, ammunition, and a bulletproof vest. He was apprehended without incident late Monday evening in Poplar Bluff by the Missouri State Highway Patrol. A spot check for seatbelts and insurance in Poplar Bluff netted authorities a mobile meth lab Tuesday afternoon. Just before 1 o'clock, officers were conducting the spot check on South 5th Street at Cherry in Poplar Bluff when a motorcycle driven by 33-year-old Michael Hahn of Poplar Bluff failed to stop and fled the scene. After a short pursuit, Hahn was pulled from the motorcycle, restrained and handcuffed. At the time, Hahn carried a plastic bag which contained methamphetamine residue, but strapped to the back of the motorcycle was a one-pot or shake-and-meth lab in an actively reacting state with a great deal of pressure building inside the bottle. Now, this active meth lab could have easily exploded. He was charged with possession of a controlled substance, attempt to manufacture a controlled substance, resisting arrest, and several traffic violations. Well, still to come on 18 Eyewitness News, if you take antidepressants, you'll want to see why doctors are taking a much closer look at them. We'll have all the details coming up next in Your Health. And Dustin Kopp is in the Storm Tracker Weather Center making a last minute check of our Storm Tracker forecast only on 18 Eyewitness News.
Now, here's your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast with Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. Plenty of sunshine for the next several days, lasting through at least Saturday. However, a chance of showers and thunderstorms are on the maps for Mother's Day, and the temperatures are going to continue to be around the average mark for this time of year. Here in southeast Missouri, temperatures are in the upper 60s to lower 70s, 71 in Cape Girardeau, 73 in Poplar Bluff, 69 in Festus and Fredericktown and St. Genevieve and Potosi. Here at the station, we have a current temperature of 69 degrees as well. Mostly sunny skies out there. Feels like 69. Current dew point 44 with 40% 40 humidity. And our winds are coming out north northwest at about 7 miles per hour. Tomorrow, plenty of sunshine. It's going to be a nice day. Temperatures in the 70s. You really can't complain for all that sunshine in southeast Missouri. We don't have any rain moving in until at least Sunday, and I'll show you that on the 7-day coming up in just a few seconds. But for tomorrow, we will see temperatures in the 70s, but before we get through to tomorrow, we got to go through tonight. 45 for your overnight low with clear skies, 46 in St. Genevieve, as well as in Piedmont and Ironton. Ellington 45 and 40, or excuse me, 46 rather, 45 up in Potosi and 44 in Van Buren. Tomorrow's forecast, low, a high of 71 rather, mostly sunny skies. It's going to be nice, north wind 5 to 10. We'll see temperatures in 73 in Ironton, 74 in Piedmont, 74 in Van Buren and Poplar Bluff at 75 degrees. Extended forecast is looking like this, plenty of sunshine for Thursday and Friday, high 79 on Friday. 75 on Saturday, partly sunny. Showers and thunderstorms move in for your day on Sunday with a high of 73, 71, and showers and thunderstorms possible on Monday. And then back to the sunshine Tuesday and Wednesday, high 72 on Tuesday, Wednesday 77. So we're looking at some rain for Mother's Day. And again, I'm trying to get that pushed out of the forecast. Another check of our weekend forecast here in southeast Missouri. High 75, low 56 on Saturday, partly sunny sky, and then chance of showers and thunderstorms on Mother's Day with a high of 73. Let's check out your storm tracker weather forecast. More details are located at froggy96online.com. Just click on the weather tab. Fred, back to you. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News with Jeremy Martin. Right fielder Carlos Beltran took care of Tuesday's first two innings and starting pitcher Jake Westbrook handled the rest. Offering two-sided dominance, the Cardinals beat the Arizona Diamondbacks for a second consecutive night, winning 6-1. Beltran, the roster's replacement for free agent Albert Pujols, had the 32nd multi-home run game of his career. Beltran used a two-run first-inning shot and a second-inning grand slam to account for all the Cardinals' offense. Westbrook dominated the D-back hitters with seven shutout innings. He allowed only one Diamondbacks base runner passed first, and none of of them reached third base against him. The Rams are expected to have a full house this weekend after all 23 rookie free agents that agreed to terms after the draft have signed contracts. They'll participate in the team's rookie minicamp at Rams Park starting on Friday. The team signed 11 offensive players, 10 defensive players, as well as a punter and a long snapper. The Rams also expect all of their drafted rookies to be at this weekend's minicamp as well. And New Mexico assistant men's basketball coach Ryan Miller has been offered an assistant coaching position under Frank Haith at Missouri and could be named to the Tiger staff as early as this week. Miller has coached at New Mexico for all five seasons since Steve Alford became Lobo's head coach in 2007. The position at Missouri opened when assistant Isaac Chu left for an assistant coaching spot at Illinois. Missouri assistant Tim Fuller was promoted to associate head coach with the Tigers two weeks ago. Multiple sources confirm the only holdup was that Miller was waiting to be interviewed by Missouri Athletic Director Mike Alden before making a decision about the Big 12 school. And that's a look at sports. We'll be back with today's Your Live segment right after this on 18 Eyewitness News. I'm Stacy Johnson. You've got a friend who's dying for a new car, but they've already killed their credit. Now they want you to co-sign their loan. Before you go down that road, put it in park and see what's just ahead on Money Talks News. Do you see news happening in your neighborhood? Email us at news at kdkz.tv. We've had a beautiful day again here in southeast Missouri, Dustin Cop, and are we going to see the same thing tomorrow? We are. Plenty of sunshine, temperatures in the 70s. Really can't complain. I think everybody here at the station is feeling it. They're wanting to go outside and play because everybody's 
been a little crazy here in southeast <laughs> Missouri and here at the station. So, you know, we really can't complain about the weather. Mm -mm, I, no. I, I can't complain. I don't know about you, but... Uh, no, I love this. I love this weather. Spring Fever Day is coming up this weekend, Mother's Day. Uh, the Dawkins Radio and Television Group will be out uh, in lots of different areas filming and doing some live remote broadcast. Going to be great, but now we got a chance of storms coming in on Sunday, right? That is correct. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, Mother Nature has better plans for mothers out there. So if you are out and about, I'd take an umbrella just in case. All right. Thanks for watching tonight, my friends. We'll see you back at 10 and then tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Until then, have a blessed evening and God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 10 News Watch is now.